my name is Santiago Ricas Gertsen, and I am the JAXRS 2.0 specification lead. In this uh, screencast today, I'm going to show you a demo of some of the new features in JAXRS. We're going to primarily look at the synchronous and asynchronous processing. So the demo we're going to see today consists of an echo service, which is implemented both synchronously and asynchronously. Each of the requests is going to have a different ID, which will be part of the URL in the request. And in the response, it's going to be part of the entity or the resource representation. The server will support different types of URLs for both synchronous and asynchronous processing. And in both cases, we're going to be simulating a long-running operation that is going to block the thread in which the request is being processed. So from the client perspective, we're going to use the asynchronous API feature of the JAXRS 2.0 API to issue multiple requests and thus simulate multiple clients accessing the service at the same time. So this is the URL structure for the demo. From the service perspective, we have two different services that are implemented with two different URLs, long-running slash sync slash echo and long-running slash async slash echo. So the echo here is a path parameter, and it's going to take the ID of the request, as we shall see when we look at the source code. Each of the URLs has a parameter, uh, both on the service and on the client. The difference is that on the client, we also have a parameter for the mode. So we're going to be using the same client to access both type of services. And therefore, we have a mode that we need to specify either sync if we want to access the synchronous service or async if we want to access the asynchronous service. So the premise for this demo is that we have a fixed or bounded number of request threads configured in the environment in which JAXRS is running. In our demo, that number is going to be five, but regardless of the number, it has to be fixed or bounded for the demo uh, to make sense. So as a result, the synchronous service is going to block the container threads while running the simulated computation to the point that even though new connections will be accepted, they won't be processed as we reach the limit of number of threads that can operate on those requests. On the asynchronous case, conversely, we will use a separate executor in a different thread pool to carry out the simulated long computations without ever blocking new requests. So connections are not only going to be accepted, as in the previous case, but they're also going to be processed as soon as they become available, assuming that we have enough CPU cycles on the server to run in that case. So before we run the demo, let us look at some of the source code to understand the implementation. In the synchronous case, we have a resource method called sync echo that is annotated by at get and at pass, and it has a single path parameter called echo. This is the data that we're receiving from the client and that we're going to echo back to the client. So as we discussed, we're going to do a simulation here of a long-running computation. This is not exactly perfect, but it's an easy way to show in the demo. So we're just going to sleep for a few milliseconds. In this case, we're going to sleep for about a second before we return the data back to the client. That sleeping time is going to be sufficient for us to exhaust the number of threads that we have in the server. So the asynchronous service code, it's a little bit more involved than the synchronous code. We still have a resource method. In this case, it's called async echo. Same annotations as before, but a different path. The other difference is that we have two parameters. We have a path parameter echo, just like before. But we also have a parameter for the asynchronous response object, which is annotated by at suspended. This is the way we tell the JAXRS runtime that we want to process a request asynchronously rather than synchronously. So in the implementation of this method, we're using an executor, which can be either part of the application or it could be part of the environment in which JAXRS is running. And we're going to use that executor to use a different thread to process a request and therefore not block the thread coming from the container. To do that, we create a new runnable. And then it's essentially the same implementation as the synchronous code. We do a little bit of a sleep to simulate the long-running computation. And when that completes, we're going to echo the data back to the client using the resume method on the async response. So let's take a look at the client side. We're going to use the async feature on the client API so that we can issue multiple requests simultaneously. So we're going to use the same client to simulate multiple clients running at the same time. We start by creating a web target that has two path parameters depending on the application's configuration. As we shall see, the user interface will allow us to change from sync to async as well as the number of requests. And then for every request 
the number of which we can configure as we shall see in a moment, we're going to finish building the request by specifying the request ID, then indicating that the request is going to be async using the Fluent API. And finally, because it is async, we have to specify an instance of an invocation callback in which we're going to process the response. An invocation callback has two methods, either completed or failed. In either case, we're going to update the user interface to indicate the completion or failure of the request. So at this point, we're going to switch to the demo and see the demo running. So let's take a look at the demo now. The demo uses a Swing user interface where we can specify the URL for the application or the base URL for the application. And we can also configure the number of requests that we're going to submit using our uh, client, multi-threaded client. As part of that, we can also indicate whether we want to use the sync or the async service. So we're going to start with a hundred number of requests that are going to hit the synchronous service just to understand what's the problem here. So I'm going to click Run. And as we shall see in a moment, as the thread scheduler stabilizes, we're going to be processing the requests in chunks of five. You see five blocks are getting uh, painted from yellow to green to indicate that those requests have been processed. Now, what's happening here is that we're exhausting the number of request threads in the container, and the new, the, new threads, the new requests that are coming, they have to wait. And as they wait, we're running the overall running time of the application is much slower. As we can see, the execution time of the 100 requests was about 20 seconds. Let's see what happens if we switch from the sync server to the async server. We do that by simply uh, selecting this other option here and clicking Run again. We can see that the whole process finishes very, very quickly in about 1.2 seconds. The reason for that is that there is no waiting. And as we can see, if we look at the CPU monitor on the left-hand side, there's actually a lot of CPU available. There's really no reason for any request to, to wait. In fact, if we bump the number of requests, let's say we go to 200, so we can get a greater effect. Run it again. This time in sync mode. It's going to take a little while. And just like before, we're going to see that the requests are being served in chunks of five. And the other thing we can notice by looking at the CPU monitor on the left-hand side is that the CPU utilization is still very low. And the reason for that is that most of the time, the server is just waiting, and the requests are just waiting. They're not being processed. Immediately, when this is completed, we're going to switch to async. We're going to run it again, and hopefully we're going to see the CPU utilization climb a little bit. And it's going to climb even more if we bump the number of, the number of requests. So let's try that. So the overall running time in this case was 40 seconds, which is obviously um, not what we want. Let's run it in async mode. If you look on the left-hand side, you could barely see the CPU utilization move. So let's bump, even though this, take, this only took 1.5 seconds, if we bump this to, say, 400, now we should see the CPU utilization climb a little bit more. So let's look at the monitor here. You can see the CPU go in slightly over 50%. We have multiple cores here, so we don't have to use all of them. But the point here is that because we're not waiting and we can process all the requests, then the, the overall performance of the system is much better. You can see that we run all the requests in less than three seconds, which is obvious, obviously much better than it would be in the synchronous case. So in summary, we showed the difference between the sync and the async services based on a particular environment where we have a fixed number of processing threads. In this case, it was five. But clearly, as we saw in this case, the performance of the async service was far superior because we didn't have all that waiting time and we were able to use more of the CPU available to the system. And also, in showing this demo, we had an opportunity to learn about some of the new features in the API including the sync and async services, as well as the async client API that we use to build the client that we executed. This particular demo is part of Jersey, which is the reference implementation of JAXRS 2.0, so you can actually download it and run it. The name of the demo is server-async-standalone. So I would like to conclude with a few uh, URLs or pointers if you want to get more information about JAXRS or the reference implementation. The reference implementation is Jersey. You can download it from jersey.java.net. You can also get it as part of GlassFish. Go into glassfish.java.net. JaxRS and Jersey are obviously part of Java EE7. 
If you're interested on the specification itself, you can go to jax-rs-spec at java.net as well. That's the website that holds everything related to the specification, including the user alias that you see right underneath. And if you want uh, to get the official version of that specification, you can get it directly from the JCP. And you just go to JSR339, which is JAXRS2.0, and you register and download the specification there. And to conclude, just a few more URLs to the Java EE7 SDK. If you go to oracle.com slash Java EE, you can get more information and download the Java EE7 SDK. And if you want to stay current with the latest news about Glassfish or Java EE in general, you can visit Twitter, Facebook, the Aquarium blog, YouTube, and glassfish.org. Thank you very much.